Hi guys, welcome to the very first episode of Microsoft ERP Beginners Tutorial Series. In this first episode, we'll be exploring about how to create a first legal entity in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operation. This is going to be a multi-part series, so the legal entity that we will be creating today is what will be used in all my future episodes within this series. So in the supply chain series, we'll be doing a deep dive into all the supply chain related modules like accounts payable, accounts receivable, uh, advanced barrows management, sales and marketing procurement, sourcing, master planning, etc. So with that note, let's get started with our first legal entity creation. So let's get started with our first legal entity creation. But before getting started with the legal entity, I just want to give you a very quick introduction to the legal entity. So Microsoft Dynamics 365 supports the concept of multi-legal entity or a multiple company. So which means that if you have a customer who's having a manufacturing plant in China and have a distribution plant in US and have another distribution plant in India and another distribution plant in Singapore, it's possible for you to define all of this legal entity as a company in the system. For example, at the moment, I'm in a company called as a DMF, which is my German company, right? So this company will have all the Germany specific localizations predefined by the Microsoft uh, demo data. Likewise, uh, you have um, the USMF, which is specific to the US legal entity, and uh, uh, you have a legal entity specific to India, legal entity specific to UK, and there are many different companies which are preloaded or predefined in the system. Uh, but when you are going into a customer implementation, it is uh, required for you to create your own legal entity specific to the customer's requirement. So uh, even though we have so many legal entity already uh, available as a demo data, we are not going to use any of them. We are going to create our own legal entity and we are going to only use our legal entity throughout the series. So which means we will be configuring each and every module that within that legal entity that we will be creating today in our future episodes. So let's get started with our first legal entity creation. So for creating a legal entity, you need to click on the breadcrumb bar and um, you need to click on the organization administration module. So as soon as you click on the organization administration module, you will find something called as a legal entity menu. So click on the legal entity menu button and the system will take you to the legal entity creation form. So let's uh, give a couple of minutes. So that's the legal entity uh, creation form and you will see all the legal entity that are already existing in the system. So in order to, uh, for us to define or create our own legal entity, click on the new button that will open a new legal entity creation form. So my company name is going to be the ADC Motors Limited. Um, to give you a little bit of background about myself, I'm from an automotive background. So I've implemented lots of projects in the automotive and heavy equipment industry. So I am going to create my example company as an automotive dealership so I can give you a lot of real time scenarios throughout the series. So I'm going to assume my legal entity that I'll create today as an automotive dealership uh, that is based out of India. Okay, so the company name is going to be the ADC Motors and I'm going to give a short name for my company which is going to be ADC. And as I mentioned, I'm going to assume this company to be in India. So I'm going to choose the country as India. It's very important that you choose your country properly here because based on whatever country you choose, as soon as the legal entity is created, the business processes with the legal entity, the field names, certain field names and taxation policies will all change specific to the country that you choose here. So there are a lot of country specific localization that happens within every company you create. So it's very important that you choose your company or country code properly in this section. So my company is in India, so I'm choosing India as my country code. So uh, that's it. So now click on OK, then a, legal, a basic legal entity structure will be created in the system. So once the legal entity is created, we'll go ahead and fill some of the important information within the legal entity. So that is the legal entity, as you can see, the ADC Motors Limited, and even at the top, uh, right uh, corner you see that the uh, legal company name is changed from DMF to ADC Motors. So even in the drop down you will see that we have ADC Motors available in the list. 
and uh, the memo is a section where you can um, give a company description just for the sake of information so let me just copy a description and paste it here so it's just about my ADC motor company and that's a short search name and in hierarchy switch the option over here the parameter uh, we will not be able to do anything to this parameter that is the parameter is grayed out we will not be able to manually turn on or turn off this parameter because the parameter will be automatically turned on so the main purpose of the parameter is within the within every company in microsoft dynamic 365 there is a concept of hierarchy uh, which is called as an organizational hierarchy or positional or a managerial hierarchy uh, to give you an example of a positional or managerial hierarchy is a team member reporting to the team lead, team lead reporting to a senior manager, senior manager reporting to a director and director reporting to the vice president. So this is basically the managerial hierarchy. So in the same module, we have a capability to set up a hierarchy in the system and define the employees and positions and each position reporting to another position. Uh, so the employee will then be linked to the user IDs. These are all topic for a different episode. We'll be covering all of this in future. Uh, so whenever you define your organizational structure and associate with this legal entity, this particular parameter will be enabled automatically. So whenever you see this parameter turned on on any of your legal entity, then that means that the organizational or a managerial hierarchy is enabled for this particular legal entity. At the moment, this is the clean slate legal entity we do not have any structure so by default this will remain turned off but in future we will create a manager hierarchy and come back and revisit the parameter the parameter would be then turned on okay so you can refer to some of my future episode uh, for learning more about this and the other parameters that is uh, use uh, financial consolidation process or use uh, financial elimination process these two uh, parameters we will be covering as a part of our finance series this is going to be a supply chain management series so we will not be focusing on this two legal uh, these two parameters for time being but just to give you a background about those parameters um, in the, in the, in the microsoft dynamic 365 we have a concept of a consolidated legal entity that is uh, when you have a group of company a specific company serves as a parent company so the parent company ne necessarily will not be a transactional company so which means that no transactions happens in the parent company but the parent company uh, will be used for some consolidated financial reporting so in such cases we might need to create a, a consolidated legal entity so if you want to make the ADC Motors as a consolidated legal entity for a consolidated financial reporting, then you may need to turn on this parameter. But mind it, but you need to be mindful of turning on this parameter because if you turn on this parameter, you will not be able to post any transactions into this particular legal entity. But in my case, I'm going to demonstrate by posting so many transactions in this legal entity in all our future episode so i will not be making this as a consolidated legal entity for time being so i'm turning off the switch and likewise it's important that you um, uh, fill in your language that is uh, suitable for your uh, legal entity in my case it's going to be english us and the time zone is also one of the very important parameter so in this case it's a indian legal entity so i will be choosing a, a indian time zone over here so that's my time zone and uh, there are a few more important uh, fields that you need to fill in a new legal entity which is one of the most important thing is the address so you, you will see that there is a a default address that's been populated with uh, with the code india and all those things uh, but uh, we need to um, further um, uh, you know create the address in more detailed manner so let me um, just edit it and get into the address so here you see the adc motors and this is a purpose of the address whether the address is a business address or a warehouse address in this case my address is going to be my headquarters business address which i wanted to be in my invoice uh, in my uh, invoice report so i will uh, just uh, leave it to business and here you need to define your country code which is india which is already available in the system so i have defined my country code so here you can um, specify your uh, postal code um, click on the drop down and check for a postal code but I do not see my postal code here so which means that I need to create my own postal code 
So for creating your own postal code, just right click and view details, then the system will redirect you to the postal code setup section. So here in this section, make sure you have your country. Uh, we know that we had our country code uh, India and make sure you have your specific province or the state. So let me uh, search and filter it for India and see if I have uh, my province. So I wanted to create it for Tamil Nadu. So I have my data here. So I don't need to um, change it. So likewise, I also quickly check if I have the city that I have my legal entity headquarters address in. Um, so yeah, it is available as well. So I don't need to even key in the city. If not, then you need to click on the new button and create your own city and uh, the province as well. Uh, so now let me go to the zip code section and I'm going to create my own zip code. So which means I'll filter it with my country code India. And at the moment I have only like four zip codes for Chennai. I do not have my zip code here. So let me just quickly create, click on the new button and, uh, select my um, province which is going to be that one and select my city which is going to be Chennai and then I will uh, copy paste my um, uh, invoice address which is my head office address over here so that's my head office address and let me also key in my um, a code that is my address uh, uh, postal code so that is how i uh, create a new postal code just save it and go back so which means that now you have created a postal code so you can choose your postal code from the list which is uh, ending with the eight zero that one and that will automatically populate the address city and uh, state and everything so at the moment, my uh, postal code, that is this, this address, I'm going to tag it as a primary address. So it's also possible to configure multiple address in Microsoft Dynamics 365 within the legal entity. So one only one address can be a primary. If you mark any other address as primary, then the previously marked one will be unselected as primary. So at, the, at one point in time, you can only mark one address as a primary address. So these are some of the basic fields that you need to fill in while creating an address. So click on the OK button, so your address will be created. So that's going to be your primary address. So all my invoicing or in my invoice reports, I want this particular address to be printed. But whenever I'm purchasing a good or whenever I'm procuring something, I do not want my goods to come into this particular address location because this is only my uh, corporate address, but my warehouse address is something different, right? So in such situation, it's also possible that we can create an another address, which is will be used for a delivery purpose, which is called as a delivery address. So let me mark it as a uh, delivery address. Okay. So I'll also change this to the purpose to delivery, not business. So that's going to be my delivery address. You'll also have, if you have a consignment warehouse and you can also have a consignment address. Uh, if, if required. So in this case, it's going to be my delivery address. And again, this is my uh, India, Indian address. And um, in this example, I'm going to use a different postal code because it's a, uh, it's in a different location. Uh, so let me choose um, that one. Okay, so that's my uh, warehouse address. So this, in this case, I'm not going to mark it as primary. Uh, so that's going to be my uh, delivery address where my goods will be delivered. And uh, other important fields are like contact information. So if you want to key in a specific person who is a contact person or uh, any contact information like an email address or a phone number that needs to be configured here, which will be a contact person for a for this ADC Motors legal entity. So let's say this is a telephone number for this particular legal entity. So we can just make it as telephone and we have different types. So here I will be picking the phone. Okay. So now I'll put it as 044. Uh, that's my telephone number. If you have an extension on it, it could also be a primary secondary phone number. And likewise, it's uh, possible that you can also give a email address. So I can choose email here and contact at adc.com just in case if somebody wants to email to this ID and that will be my email address. So on top of it, 
even if you um, want to do some advanced things like if you get into the advanced property of the specific contact information you can even change it to a mobile number if it is a mobile number or you can even mark it as a primary telephone number if you have multiple telephone numbers purpose can be business purpose if you have an extension you can define it here even international calling codes can be defined over here that's these are all hidden uh, properties within the advanced setup likewise there are more options hidden within the address section as well so if you go into the more option in advance the system will also give you an ability to uh, key in the registration id specific to each address likewise it's also possible for you to define a, a contact information specific to every single address so you have multiple address and if you want to define a contact email id or phone number specific to every single address it's also possible to do using the address specific contact information that's configured in, in the more option section. Okay, so that is in the more option section. And likewise, um, there are uh, uh, many uh, other uh, fields which are really not mandatory. For example, um, the registration numbers. So as I mentioned, there are many fields which gets enabled based on the country that you choose during the legal entry creation. Just in case if you are creating a legal entity for Japan, then all the field over here and all the fields over here will be automatically enabled in the system. So these are all the these are this are all will be the field that you need to fill in while creating the legal entity. Likewise, if you are creating a legal entity for Brazil or Italy, all these fields will be automatically enabled, right? So in the, my current example, my legal entity is an Indian legal entity, and I do not have any registration number fields that gets enabled, so I don't need to worry much about this particular tab so I'll just uh, minimize the tab likewise the bank account information can also be filled in over here but this is not the really recommended place where normally companies fill the banking information because there are different modules in the system where you can define your bank information specific to the legal entity you might even have multiple bank accounts so all those can be defined in a different area in the system but if you need to uh, mention it or define it you can even define it here in the legal entity section but most of the implementations they don't do or fill in here within the legal entity level so um, likewise you know number sequence is a very very important topic to discuss uh, without setting up a number sequence we can never proceed further with the SEM course so the next episode we will be discussing exclusively and deeply about the number sequence setup so I'm going to skip the number sequence for now I refer my next episode uh, if you want to understand about how do we set up a number sequence manually and automatically in the legal entity so for now i will just skip this number sequence setup and leave it in the next episode likewise even the dashboard images are very very important uh, whether you are doing a demo or whether you are configuring an environment for a specific customer it's required that you change the banner in every single legal entity with a legal entity specific name uh, so it is possible that that can be done through the uh, dashboard image tab for example if you want to change the banner use uh, the change button and click on the browse option let me see if i have any a sample image in my desktop um okay i do not have any sample image but you can just click on the change button and change the banner uh, in the system and that way the the banners will be changed so for time being uh, my default banner is this so which means if i get into uh, let me um open a duplicate tab so if I get into my legal entity home page you will see clicking on the finance and operations you will see the banner ADC Motors Limited over here okay so that's because of uh, the banner that we have chosen here but you can always use the change option to change the banner to a different banner if necessary so these are some of the important concepts that I have wanted to discuss as a part of the legal entity creation. Uh, but more about this legal entity and more setups on top of this legal entity will be discussed in the future episodes. So keep watching. See you again in the next episode with the topic of number sequence setup.